Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market, let's figure out what is happening and what we can expect moving forward. So as usual, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that like button as it does help a lot. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership section on YouTube is live. The link is down below in the description of each and every video. For $3 a month, you get access to my uh, membership section only, right? Where pretty much I share my intraday thoughts on Tesla. A bit of a, you know, we have a community here. We have people always talking to each other or like some people helping others as well on top of me, of course. And you pretty much get access to that with essentially me sharing my thoughts throughout the day as the stock is trading. Now, let's just jump, jump into it, Tesla closed uh, just a couple of minutes ago up about 3% on the day closing at about 254 and a half dollars per share which compared to the market is you know maybe slightly in line maybe slight outperformance but not nothing too crazy right a little bit of a outperformance if anything but let's talk about what is happening so yesterday the bears obviously got quite excited right i mean rightfully so to be fair it was a pretty random almost seeming uh, drop pretty steep one too but People were asking me, in the, you know, what my thoughts are on this. And I pretty much said how, you know, I, I think it's just market games, right? Now, we talked about yesterday how potentially this drop can potentially, you know, take us a little bit lower to about uh, the low 240s, right? The low 240s is what I was talking about. That was like my main price target because that to me would have been the overall retest. And I still think that's in play. And I'll talk about why I think that's still potentially in play. We're closing at a potentially, you know, finicky spot here. And then it comes down to, down to tomorrow to see how tomorrow closes. But let, let, let's go over everything. So first and foremost, we obviously had a beautiful bounce today, right? GDP data come out, et cetera. So, and, and things look great. Market, beautiful day. Bears are definitely, yeah, I, I don't know. Man, bears are just not eating well for the past while. Honestly, for quite a while now. Yeah, so anyway, we came down pretty much yesterday almost exactly to two uh, important levels, right? Uh, the first one, of course, we talked about was the fact that we're pretty much at the bottom or extremely close to the bottom of uh, pretty much this channel, this ascending wedge that we are in, this, these two blue lines right here that we, like I said yesterday, also did constantly get uh, you know support from that uh, line, right? Obviously, we started it here, bounced here. We had two fake outs here. I'm sure you remember those pretty massive fake outs as well. Obviously, yesterday as well, right? We could bounce right down to it as well. And so far, we're bouncing and holding this ascending wedge. Now, again, usually these ascending wedges do fall to the downside, right? More often than not, they go like this. And then you kind of, you know, you kind of get bounces like this over and over. And then ultimately, you fall down. Obviously, not every single time, right? It doesn't mean it has to happen 100% of the time because that would be too easy, right? It can technically just nullify this and just bounce upwards and out. Instead of breaking to the downside, it breaks to the upside and breaks this blue line that's been resisting us, which if it happens like anytime next week will pretty much be to be safe, 265, right? So that's number one. And also, of course, we did pretty much bounce right off of yesterday's uh, uh, level that I talked about as well, which is this green line, which again was that, remember that bow flag that we talked about, right? There was looked something like this. Remember we had that bow flag and then we had the line from down here. I was talking about that for quite a while now. Pretty much the whole time we were consolidating in here, we've been talking about this potential bull flag that we obviously already broke out of, and we did retest that. Now, the one thing I'm like a little mixed feelings about is like I said, we didn't really truly retest the actual, like the true bull flag, like this massive one that we broke out of right on this weekly candle. I mean, we got pretty close. Like this is pretty darn close on the weekly uh, time frame. Like to be pretty much went down to what, what was the low of this? The low of this was pretty much 247 on the dots, and the retest was around 242 ish so it's only like five ish dollars off which isn't the worst thing in the world but it's also not like a true retest so i'm a little bit skeptical about that still and let me explain why so the way i look at this is as follows so let's go to the 65 minute chart here quickly which is essentially the one hour chart 65 is just better because it this an odd num number of hours essentially in the in the trading day right since one of the hours is technically half hour so this kind of evens it out anyway the point i'm trying to make here is the fact that so we have this massive drop, right? And if you can technically argue the fact that this right now, what we're getting is essentially a dead cat bounce. So for the most of the day, we've been uh, getting rejected at this exact 0.5 Fibonacci level. If you go from this potential, again, potential swing high to this potential swing low from here to here, right? We were pretty much just going sideways and just constantly like several weeks in a row getting rejected pretty much right at this 0.5 level of about 253 and a half, right? Obviously, we broke above it. And this is what I was telling our members about, right? This is the first level, but the main level to really break to nullify this potential debt cap bounce is 255, right? 255 to me is an important level. Above 255 is important because, again, we nullify that, right? It acted as a support over here. You can see a lot of candles over here, a lot of wicks constantly bounced off of this rough 255-ish level. And now we're kind of, you know, almost there. We're about half a dollar away. So this is going to be the level I'll be watching very closely tomorrow. If we can break above this level and ideally close above 255 at least, like at least tomorrow and get a weekly closure there as well, that would be uh, ideal. And that to me would signal that 
The move to the downside to about that 242 level to get that true retest. I have like a hair in my eye or something. Uh, to get that retest about 242-ish, give or take, of course. The chances of that drops, like a, a pretty fair amount, at least in my eyes, right? Just, just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, of course. That drops a, a fair amount, right? If we close, especially well above 255, like 256, 7, et cetera. Um, on, the, on the flip side, if we do not close above 255, and if we do find rejection pretty much at the 618 level, which is the last line of defense for bears to even get a chance to go down to that to those levels, like 242-ish, then I think the chances increase, right? So that's kind of the easiest way to look at it. Above 255, especially closures above 255, like a weekly closure candle above 255, et cetera. Um, yeah, that's good for the for the bulls. If, if we don't, still a little skeptical. Now, with all of that being said, right, there's two more things that I want to mention, important ones. First and foremost, I really need to see how this weekly candle closes tomorrow, right? Where do we close? If we go well above 255, because right now it's looking like a potential doji candle. If you don't know what a doji candle is, let me go ahead and Google it so you guys can see quickly. Right, doji candles are essentially this, right? Where you have either a gravestone, a long legged, or a dragonfly doji. They're, I just call them all dojis. To me, they're all dojis. I don't really care which one it is. They're all dojis. Obviously, right now we're doing the long legged doji, right? You can see right here, right? Boom, long legged doji. That's essentially what we're doing. Doesn't, I don't think it has to be red. I'm pretty sure the fact that whether it's red or not red is uh, fairly irrelevant, um, personally. But the point I usually try to make is the fact that maybe this one says it matters. I don't think it matters personally. The, the, the point I'm trying to make here is the fact that usually when these kind of things happen, when these kind of candles form at the top or the bottom of a trend, usually it signals that there's the potential reversal coming to the obviously opposite side, opposite direction. In this case, it would be to the downside. Naturally, you know, when you see these kind of situations, similar to how we saw this obviously inverted uh, uh, hammer candle, which is obviously bearish in nature, you need follow through. We clearly didn't get that follow through here and it completely nullified it. So same concept here. So even if we do set a doji candle tomorrow and the weekly candle closes looking pretty much like this, let's say, that's obviously something to potentially worry about. Obviously, that also means that we're probably below 255. So it's, it's a little bit skeptical. It's not ideal. But naturally you need follow through. So if you don't get the follow through, obviously it's irrelevant. So just keep that in mind, but it is something that the bears have a little bit of, you know, copium, if you will, uh, if that were to happen. So that's number one. The thing that I'll also mention though, with all of that being said, I still personally believe that in the position we find ourselves in as of right now, as of today, which is about 254 and a half, I still believe it's actually a better, just my opinion, not financial advice, just my thoughts, just thinking out loud, it's better to be long than short here. And the reason I say that is pretty simple, right? Think of it like this. If let's say um, Tesla does crash, quote unquote crash, let's say we do drop down to about that 242 level. And let's say we do come down, let's say maybe early next week to retest uh, the, the breakout of this bull flag, right? Again, I don't think it'll go much lower than like 242, again, give or take a couple of dollars. But so let's say it happens and let's say we close at this exact price tomorrow. And let's say this is where we end off. And let's say next week we do get that quote unquote crash. The drop down is only gonna be about what? Five to 6% max? Assuming, of course, it holds, which I expect it to. That's the whole point. That's the whole premise. I'm expecting it to hold. So you're pretty much risking a potential five, maybe six percent uh, of a play to the downside, while the the potential to the upside after such a breakout of a, such a bull flag, in my opinion, is just so much higher. There's, there's overall a higher likelihood of an overall breakout. So yes, you can potentially risk playing to the downside and it comes down to 242. Great, you made money, but that's a bit of a gamble. It's a little bit risky, mainly because if it doesn't, well, the other uh, upside potential is substantially higher. Like I think Tesla can, honestly, again, we measured this pretty we, we, we did this measurement. Remember this measurement we did over here? So let's go ahead and take this. Remember we had this bull flag right here, right? Then we had this bull flag. This was the, the, the pole and then we had the bull flag and then we broke out, right? Same concept. We broke out somewhere around here. The pole usually roughly measures the, the breakout target price of the bull flag. Same concept here. The pole is pretty much the exact same length as this one here. And then we also broke out. So in theory, Tesla can potentially, again, just rough measurements can go all the way up to about $350 over the next you know, several weeks. Obviously, it'll take several weeks. It'll take not just a week or even two or even three or four. It'll take probably a couple months at least, right? But nonetheless, even if, if you were to short from here, you're, again, playing for 5% uh, uh, potential to the downside for a potential risk of maybe as much as 40% to the upside. So, you know, not, it's not something I would personally be willing to risk. I'm just saying, just, you know, thought I'd mention that really quickly, especially when you have something like the MACD starting to cross the bullish side, right? You can zoom in over here. It's not obviously super convincing, but it is crossing bullish, right? It's it's definitely trying to, 
and we'll see if we can close the weekly tomorrow looking like that which is why i really want to see something above 255 for several reasons again we very much close above yes or last week's closure candle we close above the fibonacci levels that i talked about which is great for me at least i feel a little bit more confident with that we potentially break up this potential doji candle setting up and the macd most likely will close a little bit more convincingly in the green so there's pretty important factors that are that i'm waiting for to see how tomorrow plays out but that's kind of the main thing i'm looking at right now so no one knows if it'll if it'll drop down to 242 first before a rocket or we just pretty much rocket from here or you know whatever no one knows absolutely nobody knows if anyone tells you they know well they're lying but again it's all about probability and it's all about a risk versus reward i personally think the risk of the downside of playing to the downside doesn't warrant the potential risk of how much money you may lose to the upside if you're playing a bearish position here so hopefully that makes sense just my opinion of course take it as you will but if you're interested in into what i am doing i i do have shares I'm, I'm just i still have like about half my main account is in shares i'm just selling calls weekly calls against that i'm doing weekly specifically because i do think that there's a breakout potential like a, a rally imminence i don't know when i think there's a, but i think that it is imminence so i'm kind of just playing in the short time frame right now so i don't like sell super long data calls and then just get you know miss a potential like several more percentage of upside so that's what i'm doing right now and if Tesla does fall to 242-ish or slightly lower, I will start entering fresh positions as well. Otherwise, I'm just waiting and I'm just selling calls and I'm just kind of, you know, letting it do its thing until I really see like a more convincing direction being picked. So yeah, with all that being said and done, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. And as usual, I'll see you for the next one. Peace.